you can't hear me. Now you can hear me. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> I just entertained myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, hello, Lauren. Haven't talked to you in a while, but I do have your email. Welcome, Jenny, to your first um, <laughs> call. They're kind of all like this because this is really how, <laughs> how I am. <laughs> and hello, Nikki. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So let's, let's dive in. So you are Love making it. a sweetheart neckline for a client. It looks like the front is all covered up. Mm -hmm. the back has a diamond back opening. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, okay, so that, let's just answer that. So it's question number one. How can I make the border between the neckline and the mesh look finished? Yes. Trying to figure out how can I make it all look tidy and not sewn it. Um, sandwich it with mesh. Okay. Because then it will, it won't look exactly like the bodice and it won't look exactly like the mesh, but it will be a nice segue. And then as you're sandwiching it, then you'll also stretch it so it acts like a very mild elastic. And okay. then it will also finish off the back edge too. Mm -hmm. Or is this part of the bodice all lycra with the appliques on it? So what I did was I made actually the same leotard as the one that I posted in the group, which is a flesh colored lycra covered with black mesh. Mm -hmm. And I was using that as the basis and going to applique the sequin on top. That was just kind of how I figured out that I could do it. This one? Maybe that's, not, yes, uh -huh, it's basically the exact same, just actually almost the same size. So it's very, uh, very minimally different. Okay. Um, so that's what I was thinking. Does that sound like a bad idea? No, nope, I think that totally works. This leotard has sort of an, um, a sheer look because it looks like mesh over flesh colored lycra. Is this Precisely. one going to be the same or is the Yeah, bodice? so, and maybe you can help me kind of figure this out. So in the front, I wanted to create like in my sketch, really it looks like the sequins go all the way like to the side seam. And maybe actually what we just talked about with Ginny will help me avoid a pitfall here. Okay. So it would be mimicking the sweetheart shape of the front of the leotard, but slimmer in the waist areas. But I was imagining that I will cut it in such a way that the sequin material will not go cover all the front of the bodice as I've drawn it. Okay. It would like cover the sweetheart portion and maybe come in more at the waist. Okay. All right. Now let's okay. go back to your sequin effect. Yes. The other question on that is um, applique sequins to the front and the back. Wondering how much extra space I should leave on the actual leotard because the sequin fabric doesn't really stretch. That is addressed very nicely in the lace portion uh, lace of the ball gown program because the lace oh. doesn't stretch on Liesl either. I walk you through how much space to leave because I had the, the exact same issue here. And so mm -hmm. to, if you leave say a quarter of an inch or four or five millimeters between every piece and you do that regularly enough, that will be sufficient. If well, actually, well, I, maybe I'm dumb. <laughs> okay. Maybe my idea is totally stupid because I, what I was going to do was I wasn't going to piece it on like the lace. I was basically going to make the shape tailored like with the princess seams and such, but basically it was going to be more or less like one piece, one big piece. Do you see what I mean? Okay. That is totally fine, but you still mm -hmm. want to cut it up. Okay, okay. So, so that it has stretching mm. room in there. Okay, so I'm just going to okay. draw a little pattern here. And if it's, is it on organza backing? Um, if I remember, it was on a kind of net. Okay, all right. 
So before, I'm just going to draw like a random pattern here. I have no idea what your pattern looks like. I'm just drawing things. All right, so let me go speaker view and make myself the spotlight. Here we go. So let's say this is your massive applique. <laughs> Okay. Whatever size it, and it has all different colored sequins and all different textures and everything in there. If you take this massive piece and put it, say, on the entire side of the bodice, you were yeah. right in that it will have no stretch. Okay. So, and it, and then the dress won't fit as as well, no matter how well you sew it. So then, what you want to do is go in. And it will ultimately look like it's all one piece, but you want to go in and cut it and put it back together essentially <laughs> so that it is about a quarter of an inch or a few millimeters apart. And you'll have to cut um, carefully so that it just aligns with the pattern. Mm -hmm. So, and, and wherever, you can send me pictures of it if you want to, but wherever it looks like a good place to go in and cut, it may be a straight line, odds are good, it will end up being a little curvy following the line of the pattern. Cut it into multiple pieces and then put it back on with a gap. So okay. That, and that way it's got some stretch in between all of these pieces. Well, I don't have the um, that actual fabric because actually I didn't buy it yet. I'm going to turn my camera because I have one dress I started a long time ago that has a similar kind of what it is, what it's going to be. Let me see if I can turn it around. There we go. Uh, okay. So it's something like this. Now, this one has like kind of some paisley effect, but the one I'm going to buy actually does not have that. So it's basically like this but just flat with sequins no pattern it's just sequin it's just shiny it would literally be just the sweetheart shape so i'll be creating the shape myself do you see that i mean like it won't be like a flame or a swirl where there's smart places already built in for me to separate it it's just going to be following the shape of her body so okay. do you have some suggestion like how i would Yes, then then you get to get my face is really big right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I made you the spotlight yeah. video. <laughs> oh my God. You're giant now. <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it takes a while to get used to seeing yourself all the time. <laughs> Scary thing is I get my own video, so I always see myself and I'm like, oh my gosh. It took a long time. It really did. <laughs> Okay, so then, <laughs> if you've got, um, I'm going to draw a little bodice here. Ooh, okay, she, <laughs> not a good drawing. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you're going to, so it's basically the, the fabric that has all sequins. Yes. Okay, then... Um, you probably want to create some kind, and it has no stretch? Very little, like minimal. Uh, maybe I should just choose a different fabric. How about if it goes on a diagonal? If, you stre if, it, if it's on the bias, does it have? It, it has a little bit, yeah, mm -hmm. on the bias. Okay, then if it has some on the bias, then cut the whole thing on the bias. Okay. If that's st and then fit it while it's on the dress form. If that still doesn't do the trick, so maybe you could buy just like a quarter of a yard and fool around with it first, then I would probably come in and cut out some kind of pattern out of the sequins. Okay. And that, okay, that's totally your, your call. You could cut it into like whatever shape. You could cut it into flames or floor de -lis. It, okay. It, it wouldn't really matter, but that way you can okay. cut out. So you would end up treating it like lace in that sense. It would end up looking something like this. So you would have um, empty continents. Space. Yep, correct. And it, again, whatever shape it is that you want, but that mm -hmm. would do a couple of things. One, it would allow the fabric to stretch in between everywhere. And two, it would also give depth 
to it because mm. you would have a contrast between very shiny and matte. matte. Mm -hmm. And that goes a long ways. And essentially, that would, in a way, create like a burnt out velvet look. Ooh. Because that's the cool thing about like Nikki's burnt out velvet is that the velvet is, has this really beautiful, rich mm -hmm. sheen. And then the matte behind it is just creates a contrast. It's easier if you cut them out into some kind of shapes because then you can play with it as if it was lace and yeah. determine where it needs to go on her body. And then you don't yeah. get stuck like with Jenny's dress where you go, oh, this is the totally wrong focal point. Yeah. That um, makes a lot of sense. And then um, it will cost you a little less money that way doing it with these pieces. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> and you have the most flexibility. And should she ever not like them or her body shape changes or she sells it to someone and then you alter the dress again, it's easy to remove these and or add to it to accommodate a new client. Love it. So you recommend pretty small pieces then? And if you don't like the amoebas, mm -hmm. you can come in and do something like, so that you end up cutting, they could be um, swirly lines. I love that. So, yeah. it, so it doesn't necessarily have to be small. So think outside yeah. the box. But again, you yeah. created long vertical lines Mm -hmm. Don't make them straight because that's a freaking nightmare because then mm -hmm. you're trying to put straight lines on a curvy body. So having yeah. some type of curvy is more um, organic and easier for you to, to recreate. It doesn't matter if they're all exactly the same. And then this yeah. one, you've got, you still have stretch between it. So then this one is sort of um, smaller lace-like. This one gets more structured looking. I like that. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And and there's probably a bazillion more options, <laughs> mm -hmm. but then that mm -hmm. way, you know, you create a totally different look while not driving yourself crazy trying to make a non-stretch fabric work. Love it. <laughs>